Good morning, friends, and happy Monday. I have a very busy week ahead of me, so naturally, I have decided to <laughs> read as many books as I possibly can this week. This is a very ambitious stack. My stacks always are, but it's a good collection. I have um, some memoirs, I have some classics, I have some poetry, I have some children's literature, and then just some contemporary fiction. And I'm excited to read as much of it as I possibly can. I've been very recently inspired by Emma, otherwise known as Emmy on YouTube, and then also Ray, or Ray of Sunshine. Both of them are booktubers, and they do an extraordinary job at taking you along on the reading journey, and then also sharing their opinions about what they've read and what they recommend. Watching their videos has inspired me to just read as much as I can this week, this very busy week. Also, this video needs to be done by Friday, which means that I need to edit it on Thursday. So really, realistically, I only have three days to read as many books as possible. I could possibly do a two-part vlog. So I film the first three days, share it on Friday, but then continue to read and then upload part two next week. It could be a two-part reading vlog. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Regardless, I'm going to fit in as many books as possible these next three days, and they are quite short. Um, I'm not sure that, well, one of them is more than 200 pages, but the rest of them fall under 200. Um, I'm not sure that's any less impressive. I am going for quantity this time around because I do want to see how many books I could read during an actual work week. So the book that I'd love to begin this challenge with is Sanditon by Jane Austen. So I've tried yet again to buy Mansfield Park from my local bookstore, but they still don't have it in stock. So Sanditon it is, it's Jane Austen's very last novel and it was not completed. I've never tried to read a uh, non-completed novel, so that'll be a new experience. Since I've already been on a Jane Austen kick, I'm excited to get to this one. Also, this cover is fascinating. <laughs> um, I'll go through the rest of the books as I read them because I could stand here for an hour and talk about them all, but I really need to get back to work. On my agenda for today is editing the birthing video that I filmed for my friend last week. She had a healthy baby. His name is Oliver. He is nine. He was 9.6 pounds when he was born. Can you believe that? so healthy so beautiful i'm so happy for her the whole experience was amazing and i have this giant backlog of footage that i need to somehow make into a video to share with her family and friends so i'd love to get that as finished as possible today i'm also super behind on emails and messages because i was out last week helping my friend so i'm gonna get caught up on all of that i also need to film two patreon videos this week on top of this youtube video my to-do list goes on but as with the books i just need to get to it rather than stand here and talk about it but before i go i just want to say thank you to everyone for your super positive feedback on my last video the the comments are amazing. Seriously, I just scroll through them and cry <laughs> happy tears. It's so inspiring seeing the challenges you guys have been faced with and how you're getting through it. I absolutely love this community and I just want to say thank you to each and every single one of you guys for being here. Magically pulls coffee mug from nowhere. Cheers, friends. Hmm. Thank you. Now let's get to work.
well heated home so whenever the heat does come on if I'm feeling particularly cold my favorite thing is to stand in front of the vent and just feel the warm air blow over me look It is 10.30 and I have finished Jane Austen's Sanditon and it was a very uncomfortable read. There's, there was something immediately heavy about knowing that this was one of the last things she wrote and that it did not have an ending. And then also it is very different from her other works. I did not feel the immediate comfort I usually get from a Jane Austen novel in which we're introduced to quiet, happy country life and a female protagonist that we know we're gonna love. I didn't get that with this one. The 12 chapters dive deep into the personality traits and descriptions of various characters in the story. And so it is not immediately apparent who our heroine will be or if Austin intended to follow her usual theme of a heroine who is ready to be married and thrown into a new exciting experience in which she meets various gentlemen, one of which is undoubtedly despicable, another is probably quite boring, and then the third is the one that is worthy of her love. <laughs> no, it did not seem like we were getting that with Sanditon, but of course there were many familiarities. Even, even the characters that are not that great, that are meant to be kind of annoying, um, were familiar. For example, I think that the Mr. Parker of this novel is very comparable to the Mr. Collins of Pride and Prejudice, which is very enthusiastic, but their energies are perhaps directed in the wrong way. And so they're really silly and kind of cringeworthy to be around. I don't have much else to say. I'm glad that I read it because this was a unique experience. Like I said before, I've never read an uncompleted work. And also, I discovered why this book has such an interesting cover. So in the introduction, I learned of bathing machines, which were huts on wheels that women 
would enter into and completely strip naked as the horse wheeled her towards the sea while the woman would dive headfirst into the sea to take a bath because the sea was seen as very medicinal and bathing in it was meant to be very healthy and rejuvenating and good for any ailment. So this is depicting a woman exiting a bathing machine in the late 1700s, early 1800s. <laughs> it's like respectable skinny dipping. <laughs> I had a productive work day and am getting ready to go to bed. I'm gonna read a bit of The Bear and the Nightingale before falling asleep and get back to it tomorrow. Good night, friends. and welcome to Tuesday. I felt like getting dressed up today. Can you see? Yeah, so I look kind of like a rainbow and I love it. Also, I don't know if you can see him, but Rue is very concerned. He's currently guarding the door. Does anyone else who has a dog who also has been working from home for any point of time during this past year, um, does your dog become properly concerned anytime you actually get ready for the day? Because this one totally does. Anyways, it is currently 8.30 and I'm going to squeeze in some reading before beginning work for the day. Yesterday I finished Sanditon and today I'm going to continue on my classics kick and read Much Ado About Nothing, which is my all-time favorite Shakespeare play, but it's been about two, three years since I last read it, and I really like to read a Shakespeare play every now and then so that I don't lose the ability to read his works and enjoy them. I studied Shakespeare quite a bit in school. I was an English literature major and I took a whole course entirely dedicated to Shakespeare. And then when I was in high school, I took an extracurricular online Shakespeare course. So I've read at least 20 of his works However, it is still very difficult for me to just sit and read his plays. I find that I absolutely need to listen to audio adaptations of the plays as I read along. And I actually really enjoy this because they're actual actors, they're voice actors, and it's so much fun to listen while I read. There are so many free audio adaptations to the Shakespeare plays available online. I'll go ahead and link one or two to Much Ado About Nothing. So this is my read for the day. I'm gonna go ahead and get to it before I start work. I plan on filming a few Patreon videos today and hopefully finishing up my edit of the birthing video that I was working on yesterday. Um, it's a very intimidating project. It's just so emotional. I cry anytime I sit down to edit it and I'm trying really hard to find the right music. I don't want it to be cheesy, but I also want it to properly convey how much emotion was involved in this experience. So it's been a big project. Anyways, let's get reading, friends. While nature is open all over, grab it strong and carry it with you. Uh, you're on the way to be standing again. On
Okay, so it is 1 p.m. and the sun is out. So I've bundled up and I'm gonna go ahead and take a lunch break and read outside in the sun. It is a balmy 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So got on lots of layers, but I can't resist this sunlight. Do you wanna go outside, Mr. Rue? I only got through the introduction this morning, so I haven't actually started um, Much Ado About Nothing, but the introduction was so interesting, and we're gonna get started now. <laughs> sunlight especially during February is a blessing so I enjoyed reading out here I got through act one and now I'm gonna go ahead and eat some food and get back to work My day definitely took a turn for the worst and I've spent a significant amount of time crying and just feeling terrible mentally and emotionally tonight. Nothing horrible has happened. I am just really struggling through a lot right now. Um, I have some personal things going on and then also as I've mentioned before, just winter and the pandemic and all of that fun stuff so just as always striving to keep it real with you guys and show you that it's not always um sun memes and smiles and happy but this will pass tomorrow is a new day and i hope it's a better one good night friends
I have spent the entire day working and reading in bed and it's felt amazing and I've ended it with this sunset because I was just reading The Little Prince and apparently The Little Prince has seen over 40 sunsets in one day and he says that sad people enjoy sunsets and I realized I haven't seen the sunset in months. I don't know how I let that happen. And so I decided that I needed to get out right then, right there, and go see the sunset. And it has not disappointed. It's felt really good to get outside and just pause and appreciate something outside of myself and be comforted by the ongoing cycle of the sun. No matter what, the sun will rise and the sun will set, thank goodness. <sighs> yeah, it's really nice. Um, Yesterday started out so strong, I was having a good day, and I had a very productive work day. I got so much work done, but by the time evening rolled around, I just got very upset. And I think what spurred it is my dad's birthday is today, and I am someone who carries around a ton of guilt for living all the way across the country from my family. And I have not seen my family in over a year now. I have brothers and sisters. I have my parents, obviously. And then I also have grandparents. And a significant portion of my family is high risk for COVID. So I haven't seen them <laughs> in such a long time. And it super sucks, um, especially being so far away for birthdays and important events. So. I've already been feeling lonely in isolation and that didn't make it any better and then I also have other businessy and personal things going on in the background and ooh, it just all hit me so I was feeling really sad and the sunset has helped and the books that I read today have been medicine for my soul I can't wait to tell you more about them but it is pretty cold outside and the sun has officially set so i'm gonna go ahead and head home and fill you guys in on the books that i read today say that too often. For me, these conversations or these monologues, to be more accurate, are spread out over the course of multiple days, hours apart from each other, and uh, for you, they're like every two minutes. So it could sound really repetitive to you, but I hope it doesn't. Today has been a good day. I decided to put off my Shakespeare reading because my soul needed the comfort of children's literature and these books were so healing oh my goodness i read the boy the mole the fox and the horse by charlie mackesy and if you have not read this book i so 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 highly recommend it it was given to me by my friend randy otherwise known as Randon Lynn Reads. She has her very own shop and I love her art. So I'll link it down below if you wanna check it out. But she gifted this to me for Christmas and it was everything I needed today. Seriously, I think the author summarizes it perfectly in his introduction where he says, I hope this book encourages you 
perhaps, to live courageously with more kindness for yourself and for others, and to ask for help when you need it, which is always the brave thing to do. When I was making this book, I often wondered, who on earth am I to be doing this? But as the horse says, the truth is that everyone is winging it. So I say, spread your wings and follow your dreams. This book is one of mine. I hope you enjoy it, and much love to you. Thank you, Charlie. The story is so simple, it just follows a little boy and a mole and a fox and a horse as the boy tries to find his way home, whether home be a physical place or something much more emotional and philosophical. And the conversation is, again, so simple but so profound. I love how Charlie takes the complexity of the human experience and makes being alive in the big, wide, scary world much less intimidating by reminding us that love is the most important thing and that kindness goes a very long way with others and with yourself and that to ask for help is in fact the bravest thing that you can do because asking for help does not mean that you're giving up, rather that you refuse to give up. I'm essentially paraphrasing the conversations between the boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse, but it's stuck with me and it was a really important reminder to me. The timing with this one was perfect. It was exactly what I needed today, especially after getting so stressed out and overwhelmed and upset yesterday. Much of the same can be said for The Little Prince, which is the other book that I read today and really, really enjoyed. I've actually read this book before, but I've only ever read it in Spanish and the experience of reading it in English actually hit home in an unexpected way. Again, the conversation in this book are so simple, but so meaningful. The Little Prince is lonely on his planet and so sets out to travel and experience other planets and find a friend and in his travels he learns of love and what it is to belong and have friends and also to trust and to listen. I really like how the little prince only asks questions and he doesn't answer any questions that others ask him. Ever the observer that one is and his observations are a really good reminder to step back reevaluate your life and what's important to you, learn from others, and then go on living your life. So reading children's literature is one of my all-time favorite things and I feel much better today after doing this. So tomorrow is my Shakespeare day and it's also the day I'm meant to be editing this video. So we'll see how much further I get along reading. I've read three books this week so far and they have been small, but they've been immensely valuable. I have so enjoyed the process of reading them and completing them. It feels, it's so satisfying. And though the page count is not grand, the meaning that I've pulled from these stories is no less important. Yay for tiny books and tiny people and tiny planets. Okay, friends, I'm going to bed and um, tomorrow's a new day. So see you there.
I've just taken a break from work because an unexpected package arrived. Look at this. This is a Valentine's Day gift from my mom. It's a Hoya heart, which is a type of succulent, and I think it's so adorable. So if you're watching this, mom, thank you. I dig you. <laughs> So this morning I read a collection of poetry by Sarah Terse and it was so good. It was published in 1933 and I want to do some more research on Sarah herself and learn more about who she was and just read up on her works but I did very much enjoy this collection of poetry. And then I'm up to scene three, act three in Much Do About Nothing and I'm enjoying it so much. It's so lighthearted and funny. I know that things are about to take a turn, but seriously, it's the perfect pre-Valentine's Day read. There's so many allusions to Cupid and love, and overall the play is just very happy and sunny. And it's just amazing how much of an influence Shakespeare's works had on everything, really. I mean, even today in our modern day, like I've been watching Gilmore Girls and Luke and Lorelai are Beatrice and Benedict. There are some very clear parallels between the two. And then even just finishing Shadow of Night in the All Souls trilogy, I mean, Matthew and Diana are at Blackfriars and Shakespeare is alive during their time. And it was really rewarding reading the introduction to this play after having experienced the world that Shakespeare lived in through Deborah Harkness's novels, the All Souls trilogy. I just felt so much more familiar with how things were during that time or how they were suspected to have been during that time. So I'm going to get back to work. I'm actually editing this video that you're watching today. It's kind of like Inception. I'm watching myself read and work throughout the week and now you're also watching me do these things but I'm in the past, you're in the present and currently it's the present for me. This is odd. I'm gonna stop. So <laughs> so yes, I'm going to get back to work. I hope to finish Much Do About Nothing tonight as well as finish editing this vlog. It'll likely be a very late night for me but that is totally fine. I've rested a lot recently. Um, yeah, well. I dig you guys, especially you, mom. Yay. Is dad home? Who is it? They, they're kind of well equipped. Hey, I just got home to Morgan and Rue. Say hi, Grandma, you're on video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've been on that picture. It was March 23rd, 2018. Yeah, I have been. Hello. <laughs> I have officially finished Much Ado About Nothing, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. This is actually the easiest time I've ever had reading Shakespeare. I don't know if I'm getting smarter or if I was just missing something. Either way, I really enjoyed the read and I didn't ever think I would say that about Shakespeare. So here we are. I did want to mention that the editions I most enjoy reading of Shakespeare are the Folger editions. So on each left page, they have kind of like a dictionary of terms, phrases, words that you might possibly find unfamiliar. And then at the start of each new scene and act, they have a very helpful summary of what happens. And then on the right page, they have the actual Shakespearean text. I prefer this format over the modern day exact translations of each page. You know how some other editions of Shakespeare plays will have the original text on one page and then a modern translation on the other? If I buy that version, I will inevitably just read the modern translation. So, Folgers is definitely the way to go for me. And that is a wrap on this past week, or at least these past four days. I have read four books, nope, five books and thoroughly enjoyed each of them. It was extremely satisfying getting to read works of different genres from cover to cover. 
in these four days, I read some children's literature, I read poetry, I read some classics, and yet each was very applicable to my day-to-day -day life, to all of our lives. Each was a very nice place to escape to during this not so great time in our lives, but also provided a very refreshing perspective on the modernity that is locked down at the moment and winter. And so I think that I will continue this challenge and make a part two to this vlog. It is Thursday night, so I still have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday before my whole week of reading as many books as I possibly can is completed. I look forward to seeing you next week, friends. Thank you so much for being here. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Happy reading!